Kahala Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahushai Ba Hashem Rokakudash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David, reborn again in this generation. And Shalom to the one third Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the coming pagan holidays that the heathens partake in and I want to give you a heads up of what they're doing so let's start off with the scripture this is Jeremiah 10 and 2 thus says Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahushai learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathens are dismayed at them for the customs of the people are vain for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must need be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil neither also is it in them to do good now ultimately this was referring to uh, the captivity of Babylon but it rings true today you see we're actually coming upon the uh, one of the biggest pagan and satanic holidays around and this would be December 25th or as the world knows it Christmas now I just want to uh, play put it right out there Christmas has nothing to do with Christ right or the Messiah or the Bible well I take it back the thing that Christmas has to do with the Bible is that the Bible tells you not to do it like I just read to you now what you're looking at here is the cutting down of a tree in Florida to be erected in the Rockefeller Center in New York. Now, every year, this is a big event. The Rockefeller Center goes around and looks for volunteers who are willing to give up a tree. And we can actually see uh, what they did a few years ago. Now, like I said, the Rockefeller Center goes around, makes a big event of this to cut down a tree usually a fir or a spruce something to use and we're back on a saturday morning november 11th 2017 and will you look at what's coming to town will you believe it that is dylan riding down 49th street with the rockefeller center christmas tree on this very chilly saturday what a beautiful tree that is it is beautiful wait till it's all decorated <laughs> lighted up and if the cold temperatures didn't tell you what season we're in well that site the scene you're seeing certainly does dylan what do you, what's the scene over there? Set it for us. You know, it's really cool. Last year I was about nine months pregnant, so I couldn't ride next to the tree, but now all bets are off. So I get to sit right at the base of this 75 foot tall Norway spruce. It came all the way from State College, Pennsylvania after being chopped down earlier this week. So why is this tree the lucky tree? Well, I'll take a look. Oh. We're not going to get into the story of how they choose these trees, but ultimately they make a big deal about these trees and how they get chosen. But as we just read, this is what the heathens do, and they do this to, uh, uh, to well, one, the world believes they do this to uh, have a decoration for the Christmas holiday. But let's go ahead and read what where this uh, custom comes from. It comes from the pagans in Rome, which and it actually goes back further than that because it actually goes back to Babylon, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. But let's read the uh, origins that come from Rome. It says the festivals of Rome are innumerable, but five of the most important may be singled out for uh, electation: uh, Christmas Day, Lady Day. Easter, the Nativity of St. John, and the Feast of Assumption. Each of each and all of these can be proved to be Babylonian, and first 
as to the festival in honor of the birth of Christ or Christmas. How come it that that festival was connected with uh, the 25th of December? There is not a word in the scriptures about the precise day of his birth or the time of the year when he was born. Uh, what is recorded there implies that at what time soever his birth took place, it could not have been on the 25th of December. At the time that the angel announced his birth to the shepherds of Bethlehem, they were feeding the flocks by night in the open field. Now, no doubt the climate of Palestine is not so severe as the climate of this country, but even there, though the heat of the day be considerable, the cold of the night from December to February is very piercing, and it was not the custom of the shepherds of Judea to watch their flocks in the open fields later than about the end of October. It is in the last degree incredible. So basically, for the most part, like it tells you here, it couldn't the the birth of the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, which is the true name of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, could not have been born in December 25th, as he was more than likely born during the time of Passover, which we would know today as springtime, or the beginning time of spring, when the the, the day and the night are uh, at a good temperature. Now, just like it said here. December 25th is the dead of winter so that those nights would have been extremely cold so and and the uh, shepherds would not have been out in the field also you would not have a baby in a manger uh, in the in that temperature now like it said up here that these could all these uh, rituals including Christmas can be traced back to go to back to the Babylonians and the reason that is is because the ancient king known as Nimrod, his birthday was on December 25th. Now, Nimrod was the first man after the great flood of Noah that was able to bring together the then population of the world, which would have been about 600,000 people or so, give or take a couple hundred thousand, but he was the first person to unite these people as one so much so that they decided to build a tower the tower of babel now this is explained in genesis 11 uh, about the tower of babel um, and you can read about uh, nimrod in genesis 10 and 8 now he ultimately the story goes is that he had died during a hunting accident and he was killed uh, and he was killed and his blood was uh, spattered or, or, or uh, thrown on a stump of a tree. The tree then gave, gave uh, birth a little baby tree or life from it and that was a signification that he would, he would uh, come back to life. Now his wife who is known as Samaramis uh, in in the Egyptian culture they called her Isis well uh, Nimrod when he had died uh, Samaramis had claimed that he had ascended up into heaven and he had become the Sun and she had claimed that the Sun had impregnated her with its rays and the child that she was carrying was Nimrod in the reincarnation brought back to life again now she named her son Tammuz, and Tammuz continued the the uh, the charade that he was his father, and hence this is where you get the immaculate virgin birth, and you also get the belief that the father and the son are one. Now this is also why today and throughout our history, human history that is you've always had a celebration of December 25th as we just read the Romans celebrated Santanalia and so forth and bought the the feast of Bacchus 
and the name the um also known as names of, of Nimrod, you'll go you go back and you can find out that all these gods here all had the same uh, um, celebration of, of, of birthday, December 25th. And this is ultimately because just like in the old world, the new world is still practicing paganism and they're worshiping the gods of old, which are not gods, but are simply men who pretended to be gods. This is Isaiah 57 and 5. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Now, this was in reference to the Israelites who had started to practice paganism. The things that they started to do to put idols under trees and also practice sacrificing humans, children that is. Now, that is pretty much being done today. Now, we're doing it through uh, the worshiping of the Christmas tree, which as we just seen, uh, the, the new tree for this year has been selected and cut down and it's on its way to New York to be placed in the Rockefeller Center, which you see here. Now, the Rockefeller Center is by far one of the biggest pagan sites uh, in New York City. You see the Rockefeller building back here has very has many Masonic related uh, uh, murals which ultimately tied back to paganism. One of the more prominent and important ones would be this one right here. This figure here is known as Prometheus who's ultimately is Satan basically. Prometheus story is that he stole fire from the god gods and delivered it down to humans and the gods punished them for that. Now this basically uh, puts forth that belief that Satan rebelled against God and he's teaming up with the humans namely the Caucasians to fight against God right and that's where you got your Satan worshippers your Freemasons your Eastern stars and all that ultimately it's paganism now when that tree is here and all these people are paying worship to this tree they're ultimately paying worship to Nimrod so back to like what I had said after Tammuz was born they continued the the belief that that the people of Babylon were to continue to worship Nimrod but since Nimrod's body wasn't around anymore they would do it as a form of bringing the tree into your house and that tree would represent Nimrod as when his blood spilled on the, that tree stump it had sprouted forth life of, a, of another baby tree that was signifying that that Nimrod had become one with nature and he had become one with these trees so this is ultimately what the whole belief behind the Christmas tree is this is why you're supposed you're, you're supposed to put present under the Christmas tree so that way you can bow down to get those gifts and ultimately inadvertently worship the Christmas tree or basically Nimrod right and ultimately it, it, the the worship uh, ultimately goes back to his phallus because you see the the uh, angel on top represents Samaramis so you got the wife and the husband here and you're worshiping both of them right and in this case here this is uh you have satan here which uh is is uh right front and center of this pagan uh, uh idol which worships both the father nimrod and the wife samaramis right so this is idolatry people now what is the first commandment in the Bible or of the Ten Commandments it tells you this this is Exodus 20 and 3 thou shalt have no other gods before me so it's very plain if you practice Christmas you're putting another God in front of the Lord so and what does the Lord command us to do with this this is Deuteronomy 12 and 3 and ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars 
and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. Now this ultimately was the commandment that uh, we were given to destroy the land of Canaan and also all their idolatrous things. That commandment still stands true today. We are not to, to, to partake or worship or give reverence to the altars of these other false gods of these other nations. We're, we're to break them down. Now that being said, we are in our captivity. So you can't just go out there and go and start busting up uh, you know, Christmas trees you see out on lawns and all this type of stuff. Don't do that, right? You're also gonna get, get put in jail. But what you can do is you can remove yourself from the worshiping of, of the holiday and of the rituals which which are done to ensnare your, your soul and damn you to death. So I just wanted to go ahead and touch upon that, Akium. So get ready for the coming pagan storm of, of these holidays. But uh, uh, until the next time, I want to go and give all praises to Yahweh. Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Rukhah Double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.